All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, video in this series. So anytime I make any major changes to this project, I'm just going to slide a video in and discuss the change and why I changed it uh, rather than going back and redoing the entire series. It's easier for me if I just do it this way, because as as the series grows, uh, it's going to become more and more difficult for me to go back and redo everything. Uh, these last two videos that I did are still relevant. They're not affected by this at all. In fact, none of this is really affected by uh, my discovery at all. So uh, you don't need to be concerned about that. I'll go ahead and discuss what it is, though. Uh, if you've already seen this project, then you, you could probably already see that I've removed the IK bone uh, examples. So Dracor kept asking me some uh, questions that had me uh, thinking. And so I started doing some experiments and testing uh, to prove uh, or disprove my ideals on how IK bones worked. And I, I stumbled across the fact that IK bones aren't actually needed. So uh, just to give you an example, uh, I never realized this until recently, but if you try to add a virtual bone pointing to a bone, and there's already a virtual bone pointing to that bone, it will not add another one. For example, I have one pointing to the hand L on this one already. If I try to add a second one, it won't add it. That's a clear indicator as to where that virtual bone is pointing if you're ever in doubt. Uh, in ALS, uh, I did not realize that at the time. I only discovered that recently. And I was always always under the impression that the IK uh, that the virtual bone IK hand L or VB IK hand L was pointing to the IK hand L, uh, and it actually isn't. So I don't know why I used that naming convention, uh, but he is not pointing those to the IK bones. Uh, and you can tell if you go over to his project and you right click on that that IK hand gun virtual bone on any of his hands and you try to point it to uh, the other hand like the hand L or the hand R and that virtual bone is already there and so it will, will not create it again. So with that said, the reason why uh, he did it the way he did it was because he animated his IK hand gun bone and he was using that to attach his guns to. So if you rotate the, uh, the uh, weapon R bone, for example, in relation to the hand R, for example, in the melee weapon attack, the weapon R bone rotates relative to the hand during that animation. When that happens, if you have a virtual bone specifically pointing from the hand R to the hand L, then that hand, that hand L virtual bone cannot be used as an effector uh, because it'll place the hand in the wrong location. And so you need to do it from the weapon R bone. So if the weapon R bone rotates, the virtual bone will be displaced with it. And the hand will be placed in the correct position. So that's a rundown on how I did these uh, virtual bones, why I did these virtual bones. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be covering these in more detail. And... Uh, and we're going to be making a project where we do all this from scratch. So stay tuned for that. Before I go, though, uh, I want to discuss that I did add this display right here that covers socket IK, and I reordered all these. Uh, and I did make it so that these uh, characters don't start playing until you approach them. And I did that just to make it a little bit more performance friendly. I may be... Uh, investigating some of the performance issues with these uh, content example uh, pack assets to find out why they're so uh, heavy on performance. And I'll try to make them more performance friendly in the future for people with lower end mach machines. But anyway, the discovery with the IK bones, it didn't really affect anything in here. It just caused me to have to remove those and reword things a little bit. Uh, other than that, all these examples are still relevant and they're still important for getting proper hand placement and IK. So I just wanted to point that out. 